and we are live. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 93 of Checkpoint. I'm one of your hosts, Vincent DeSantis, today joined by James Walmer, and it's a special day, baby. It's graduation day. It's graduation day, baby. I'm graduating college, baby. This is way too real. Let's go. I can't believe it's actually happening. Um, my mind is totally elsewhere from the podcast today, but we've mm -hmm. we've curated some news to go through. This might not be the longest episode, but we got to get into it because there's some good stuff this week, okay? If Vincent, you don't, yeah. You look great today. Dude, I need to stop and say you look great. I appreciate For those it. of you on uh, uh, listening on our audio platforms, you're missing out. Just jump on over to YouTube, boys. Jump on over to YouTube. Jump on over to YouTube. Check them out. I do like that you're just pushing out the chest hair a little bit here because I, I like it a lot. Just a little it's bit right real here. nice. It's mm -hmm. a little... You know what? Yeah. I can't say it, yeah. you know? But if you don't know, this is Checkpoint, your number one show running up all the hottest gaming news stories of the week and discussing all the relevant topics that you need to know about. Audio listeners, you can find us on YouTube at youtube.com slash strictly casual. Please hit us up with those ratings on audio platforms and sub on YouTube. It helps us a lot. This episode is brought to you by Manscaped, but we will tell you about that later. James, what games have you been playing this week and how are you freaking doing? Ooh, I jumped into Halo Infinite campaign, which runs like absolute cheeks on my PC. I hate to hear that. There's that HD texture pack. Guys, if you're playing Halo Infinite on your PC and you have that HD texture pack installed, it's going to ruin your game for now. Does that also rely on your graphics card or is that just a... No, it like it. I think it just makes the... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The op It just is not optimized well for okay. play, for PC sure. at all. And so if you delete that, which you have to do a full reinstall for then you can play the game just fine. But from what I played in the campaign, the first two missions was great. It was so much cool. fun. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot. And then I've also just been playing a lot of Metroid Dread. Again, play, uh, beat two bosses uh, in the third. I'm in the third room. And I just can't get enough of it. It feels oh, yeah. so good to control. Everything feels so good. I love the Metroidvania elements. I'm a, you know, I'm a slut for that. Sure. Um, and jumped into Dark Souls 3. Uh -huh. Beat Champion Gundyr this week. That was huge. Beat Oceros. Um, and oh, what a game, what a game. Jumped into the DLC. What a, what a picture, what a game. Um, Ben, what about you? This week I played the Matrix thing. The oh, so did I. Unreal Tech Demo thing. Mm -hmm. Pretty damn cool. I enjoyed it. Did it you? I, I mentioned this before, but did you feel like it was a little smudgy? For me, I felt I like it was not. a little smudgy. I didn't feel smudgy. Ugh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm crazy. Maybe it was a little smudgy, but I didn't feel super smudgy. Or mm. overbear of smudge. Fair enough. Um, and then I played exactly 40 minutes of assassin's creed valhalla but we'll get into that in a second and i bought assassin's creed valhalla uh -huh. for 15 dollars at game 11 dollars 11 dollars because you had the five dollar discount amen um so let's just jump into valhalla i haven't played anything else this week i've had no time but assassin's creed valhalla and odyssey crossover has been announced and the new valhalla dlc which is coming soon this comes from uh two is the very interesting website yeah never heard of that before uh, Dawn of Ragnarok is the new expansion, and it's a 35-hour edition for the Assassin's Creed Valhalla, already a 100-hour game, so this is wild, making it one of the franchise's longest DLCs. This appears to be the most ambitious Assassin's Creed expansion to date. Dawn of Ragnarok is one of the longest Assassin's Creed DLCs to date, clogging in at 35 hours, even, uh, if not the biggest, it's practically another game at that length, and given you're playing as Javi, Evior's ancestor, uh, you could claim as it is, claim it is. Uh, so what's the point of Dawn of Ragnarok as an expansion? In the past, Ubisoft would have created an entirely new game for something like this. For example, Edward Kenway from Assassin's Creed Black Flag is an ancestor of Connor Kenway from Assassin's Creed 3, which is like my favorite. Those are probably my favorite two Assassin's Creed games. That was like just peak, peak Creed for me. Uh, this felt like the most unified method to give this offering to the players for the squad as a whole. Uh, Ariazus added. I'm assuming that's someone some Areza. Sort of creative. Areza added. The team has worked hard to make all material, including expansions, more accessible to users so that may, they may explore Valhalla like a theme park, which is an interesting... Uh, that links to another article, which is how... I don't know. He wants Assassin's Creed to be evolving and visually pleasing to look at, not just play, and have mm. a lot of, to look at, a lot to take in. Cool. We wanted players to be able to pick the story they wanted to follow, whether it was in England, Ireland, Frankia, or now... Svartalfheim. <laughs> I assume that's not how that goes. The crossover titled the series' first crossover story, which is a horrible title for that. I would have picked something else. <laughs> will be available for free on December 14th, which is already out. So you can play the crossover story between Odyssey and Valhalla already. Right now. There's a separate story in Odyssey that you play as the Valhalla characters, and then in Valhalla you could play as the Assassin's Creed characters. Kind of interesting. Hmm. Um, but regardless, we're checking on GameStop. GameStop had a deal. 15 bucks for the game. James picked it up. James. I haven't started it yet. Okay. I'm... 
I played six hours when it came out, and I just played 40 minutes. So I'm exactly six hours, 40 minutes in. Great. Mm -hmm. How are we feeling about it? I like it. I don't know if I have the time to play all of it, but I like it. Yep. And I can't wait to play a little bit more. PlayStation has finally announced its own PS5 faceplates called console covers. This comes from VideoGamesChronicle.com. Its range of console covers will start rolling out in January 22 and will come in five separate colors designed to match the colors of current and upcoming DualSense controllers. Before the covers are released, Sony will be releasing three new DualSense colors, Nova Pink, Starlight Blue, and Galactic Purple. These controllers will launch globally starting in January 2022. The controllers will then be followed by the official release of the console covers, with Midnight Black and Cosmic Red covers also releasing in January 22. So you have console covers for Nova Pink, Starlight Blue, Galactic Purple, Midnight Black, and Cosmic Red. Which are the two colors that already came out for the controllers. The yes. red and the black. Yes. Yeah. Um... The Nova Pink, Starlight Blue, and Galactic Purple console covers will come later in the year during the first half of 2022. Although both controllers and the console covers will be available in many retailers, PlayStation will also be selling them early on the PlayStation Direct online store in the US, UK, and Germany. James, I think I'm going to pick up the purple controller. I, the purple one looks really cool. It's definitely the best out of the three. I can't stop looking at it, dude. I don't want the covers for the PlayStation because I like the white a mm -hmm. lot. But the, the purple controller is fire. It really is. I probably won't buy any of this. Fair enough. I like the white mm -hmm. enough to keep going with it. To keep going. I with mean, it. you bought the white Xbox controller also. I also bought the white Xbox controller. I got a whole theme going on. Sure. I got the red Switch controller now. The mm -hmm. blue Xbox and the white PlayStation. So we're really smorgasbord. We'll bring the purple in. Yeah. Bring me all the colors. See, it's like your Switch controller and your PlayStation controller had a baby. Yeah. But mm -hmm. my Switch controllers, I do one gray, one blue. Mm -hmm. i like that a lot it mm -hmm. makes me really happy then two grays or the gray and the red mm -hmm. or the blue and the red anyways up next splinter cell remake begins development at ubisoft toronto james can i get a finally finally is this the finally we wanted or did we want a new splinter cell <clears throat> game or are we okay with the remake? oh we this is more than okay okay great <laughs> amazing we're just happy to see anything legitimately splinter cell good this comes from ubisoft and it's a joint effort between ubisoft and ign here i kind of mixed the articles together so take that as which will ubisoft has greenlit the development of a splinter cell remake that will draw from the rich canvas of the brand led by ubisoft toronto the game will rebuild from the ground up using ubisoft's own snowdrop engine which is chef's kiss baby the same engine being used to develop avatar frontiers of pandora as well as ubisoft's <laughs> upcoming star wars game to deliver new generation visuals and gameplay and the dynamic lighting and shadows the series is known for is splinter cell known for its dynamic lighting and shadows i didn't think so but apparently this is coming from someone who has only played maybe half of uh, splinter cell blacklist or I think it's called Blacklist, right? Mm -hmm. That's the one with the white cover, and he's got the goggles yep. on. He's like, oh, got yep. the gun. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. sick. Mm -hmm. um, in an interview posted on the Ubisoft website, producer Matt West says, quote, I think it kind of has to be a remake as opposed to a remaster. Although we're still very, still in the very earliest stages of development, what we're trying to do is make sure the spirit of the early games remained intact in all the ways that gave early Splinter Cells its identity. Part of keeping that remake true to the series' identity is that it will be a linear game and not open world akin to many other Ubisoft Thank games. Thank God. God bless. As for the gameplay that happens within those linear levels, the emphasis is once again on stealth, not action. As it should be. Quote, it's safe to say a lot of us on the team are stealth purists. Great. We're behind that level of seriousness when it comes to those kinds of mechanics and those sorts of things that we want to see in games, says Chris Audi, the Splinter Cell's new creative director. Quote, and we're very, very aware of what makes classic Splinter Cell what it is. Sweet. Sounds like it's in good hands. It does. Quote, it's very important for us to preserve the sense of mastery by supporting players who observe the situations, make their plan, use their gadgets, and outsmart enemy creativity to deal with challenges they are presented with, he explained. Ideally, they end up coming out on the other side with no one having realized you were even there. It's the essence of Splinter Cell. I saw a few tweets floating around before this actually got revealed, and they were like, Splinter Cell is just going to be an NFT. The whole thing is just going to be an NFT created by Ubisoft. That would be pretty bad. I apologize. It'd be really bad. The, uh, the garbage truck was outside, and I would really throw a wrench. In it would really throw here. a wrench in the bikes, the bicycle that is this podcast. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Which I'm glad it seems like it's not. Right. <clears throat> I'm excited. We'll see how it looks. I'm so... Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sure it'll look amazing. Yeah. I can't wait for it. Especially in Snowdrop. James? What else ran on Snowdrop? Uh, there, well, Avatar in the new Star Wars game, but I'm, I think that's the engine they upgraded like previous games too it's a whole thing i'll have to look okay 
but I remember seeing like snowdrop demos and stuff. Like mm-hmm. they do those like cinematic trailers, like rocks and water and shit. And you're like, oh, shit. whoa, it looks crazy. And then it never looks that good. But mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. in theory, it could be there. But it's time to jump into the ad read. James, you want me to start? And you want to get the middle? Or you want me to start and me get the middle? You start, I get the middle. Ho, 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 gentlemen. The holidays came early here at Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand. Manscaped just launched new products, including their all-new ultra-premium body wash and two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. It's time to give yourself, or someone that needs it, the Mm. gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Go to manscaped.com and use code STRICTLYCASUAL for 20% off and free shipping. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. Untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past, and it's possible you have Santa's beard in your pants. It's time to leave your significant other some milk and cookies at the bottom of your chimney. I am talking about the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 also includes the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant, moisturizer, and toner. It's time to keep your North Pole feeling and smelling fresh. This hygiene bundle will also come with a pair of Manscaped anti-chafing boxers, That'll keep your junk feeling fresh all day. Amen. The perfect package for your perfect package. Get 20% off and free shipping with code strictly casual at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code strictly casual. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year. Thank you, Manscaped. We appreciate it. Thank you, Manscaped. James, tell us a little bit about this. $70 $70 pricing is coming to PC starting with Square Enix's next games. This comes from Video Games Chronicle. Once again, both Forspoken and Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate, as pictured by DSO Gaming, went up for pre-order on Steam and the Epic Game Store this week with new higher price points. The new pricing brings the PC games in line with new-gen consoles, which have pushed $70 games since PS5 and Xbox Series X slash S is launches last <laughs> November. Square Enix appears to be the first major publisher to bring $70 pricing to PC platforms. The issue of next-gen prices is a divisive one, and publishers have yet to find a common ground. Last year, Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan defended the company's decision to price select first-party PS5 games at $70, such as Demon's Souls and Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition. Asked by The Telegraph if he considers $70 or £70 yeah. games to be a fair price for a video game, PlayStation boss Ryan, boss Ryan, boss Ryan, boss Ryan <laughs> said, "Yes, yes, I do. If you measure the hours of entertainment provided by a video game such as Demon Souls compared to any form of entertainment, I think that's a very straightforward comparison to draw." Fair point, Ryan. Fair point. Speaking to the Washington Post last year, Xbox head Phil Spencer was non-committal on the subject, stating, "As an industry, we can price things whatever we want to price them, and the c- customer will decide what the right price is for them." I kind of hate that statement. It's like but, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, but I think Phil's trying to say, like, if it's seventy dollars and people won't spend seventy dollars, then games won't be seventy dollars. But that's not what it. I, I know he like. Yeah, he meant is that. Is that? But like that's that. not how it sounds. Absolutely. Sounds like we can really charge whatever we want. How do you feel games. like, how do you feel about that? I think it, I mean, I guess if we've had this discussion the last year, you know if, what I mean? Well, when it comes to PC now, it's sort of like before they came up to $70 on PC, it almost, it can feel with this comparison of mine, it could feel like you're paying a premium to play on yeah. console, which I feel like is really counterintuitive to the entire model sure. of consoles. Yeah. So I'm okay with it. Okay, bet. Uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because it's like at first I was thinking seventy dollars games. I'm like, God, here it goes. We are up another ten. We're up another ten each generation ish kind of deal going on. But I was like, okay, only the the seventy dollars games are going to be like those PlayStation exclusives and you know the ones that are like taking full advantage of it. But yep. it's, that's not really the case, it seems anymore. But it's still Forspoken, which is a Sony first party studio. Yep. And then Final Fantasy VII Remake uh is just going to epic game store right mm-hmm. or on steam, steam and epic game store yeah. as 70 dollars. but then it's like okay that's a good looking game with dlc too so the 70 dollars kind of makes sense i just don't think it's going to be standard everywhere yet. across the board i think this is going to be like a special case type thing mm-hmm. for now i'm not saying that it's not going to go to 70 dollars, but i think it'll be on all the triple a games i think it will be 70 dollars. Mm-hmm. well call of duty did it but Battlefield this year did not. Mm. Like, things like that. Were they 60? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Weird. And that was for the cross-gen <clears throat> bundle, too. The PS4 and PS5. Well, so, I don't know. This is, We'll see how it goes. Okay, Dice. Uh, we have a little interesting topic to talk about. Last week, we talked a lot about NFTs. NFTs. 
T. And who gives an F T? I don't. <laughs> oh. uh, Stalker. Literally a day after we started recording, Stalker Two came out and said NFTs are a very important part of our game. Yeah, we're we're going for it. And this, keep in mind, this is about a week after Ubisoft put out their whole, we're releasing NFTs, and they yeah. and I, and I like put out a whole video about it, mm -hmm. which got 95% dislikes on yeah. YouTube. They delisted it. So they it. took it down, and then we got this statement. Well, yep. not this statement, but... 24 hours go by, people are real upset, and the Stalker Twitter account posted, Dear Stalkers, we hear you. Based on the feedback we received, we've made a decision to cancel anything NFT related in Stalker 2. The interests of our fans and players are our top priority for the game. We're making this game for you to enjoy, whatever the cost is. If you care, we care too. With love, the GSC Game World team. Very mature statement. We love to hear that, that they're listening to fans and stuff like that. Um, especially because this game looks very good. Can you imagine if the NFT cloud of shame was over it and nobody actually played it? Dude, it would suck. That would suck. It would suck. It would ruin the experience for a lot of people. Totally. No. Excuse me. And NFTs like it seemed like it was a very integral part of the game. Like you, people could be know. like NPCs, people could be enemies. Basically, it. I think a lot. Like you could be a superhuman. That was the thing. Is like you could be a. <laughs> you could be a. Um, it was a metahuman. That's that was the word. Like if you bought an N NFT, you could be a metahuman. Oh, that's. That's interesting. <laughs> they would scan you in. Something like that. Yeah, mm, that's kind of that's interesting. I don't like the NFT version of that, but that's mm -hmm. a good concept. I would love mm -hmm. to scan myself in and be an NPC in a game. Mm -hmm. That'd be badass. But I'd love to take a quest for myself. <laughs> Send a fetch quest, a little yeah, you know, a little one of these bad boys. Yeah, go get little, this crown. I I'll give my you a cat. shield. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but now the discussion is Ubisoft. You're next. Ubisoft hasn't said anything. They just they haven't said anything NFT whatsoever. Shit. That's it. So we'll see. But Stalker, big ups. Big ups, Stalker. Big ups to you. Vodeo Games staff becomes first unionized game studio in North America. This comes from gamesindustry.biz. Today, leadership from Vodeo. Is it Vodeo or Vodeo? I don't know. I'm going to say Vodeo. That yeah. sounds better. Okay. From Vodeo Games has formally recognized the formation of Vodeo Workers United to become the first certified game studio union in North America. The union, which was formed with the Communications Workers of America, excuse me. So it says that it will represent all eligible employees across the entirety of job positions, those who are remote, contractors, and working throughout the U.S. and Canada. Saying, quote, all workers deserve a union and a say in how their workplace is run, no matter where they work, what their employment status is, or what kind of conditions they work under, said Vodeo Games producer Miriam LaChapelle. Yeah. We're going to go with that. Mm -hmm. Quote, we have been inspired by the growing worker organizing, growing worker organi organizing, there we go within the game industry gaming industry and hope we can set a new precedent for industry-wide standards that will better our shared working conditions and inspire others to do the same end quote the formation in this union follows a growing push for better work conditions throughout the year hell yeah how do you feel about this i had this I feel great. i'm very glad you read this because I, this is this was for you this is great i'm so glad we have this because there's like crunch and I think in the wake of this entire year with Blizzard and Activision and Bobby Kotick and um, all these studios that have been so notorious for treating their employees wrong, I'm glad that there is some sort of um, unionizing entity that allows workers to um, have support wherever they work um, and have people fight for them. Yes, this is... To me, I see this as a positive thing because it feels like a more powerful way to get together and be against the things that are terrible in the workplace and stuff like that. I just hope that this is different enough to do something than just people speaking out, right? Or like just a couple people um, being upset. It's a lot of people that can get together and, I don't know, try to make change. I hope it will lead to change. That's what I'm trying to get at. So, um, What's interesting about this is a lot of people at these companies who have decided to unionize uh -huh. have the the emails that have gone out from these companies are extremely like passive aggressive say that again the emails that who are sending to who the executives yeah. from these companies going out to employees oh, who are yeah. thinking about unionizing but this sounds like this staff from what i've read of this it seems like the employers are doing this with their employees 
it doesn't seem like the employees are just doing it. I feel like we would have seen that so many other places now. I feel like this is like an employer. I don't know enough information to say that. But it, it does not feel right to, to think that no other game studio has ever unionized in North America when there's probably a majority of people in these situations would want to unionize, but the, for some reason they can't. Like, why are why now? Like, why this small studio? Like, it doesn't make sense to me. You know what I'm trying to say? I under I understand. I don't know enough yeah. about unionization, the history of unionization Same. in America. But I do know that oppressive workforces can minimize efforts of unionization very Absolutely. quickly because people are so dependent on these jobs. Right. Yeah. Right. And so without any sort of unionization, they really are like left entirely like dependent on their current jobs. Yeah. I'll have to do more research on it, to be honest. But also the gaming industry is pretty new. Yeah, I guess. Well, 30, 40 years. That is, that's new. I feel like at some point somebody's like this is the first ever unionized yeah. in North America. Like that's crazy to me. That's that's actually crazy. To it's me. huge. I don't know. That's crazy. It's huge. Wild. It's time for random fun stuff. Stories without a story, baby. Kick it off, man. Spider-Man No Way Home suits are now in Fortnite. So if you want to pick up those for probably sixty dollars for three suits, <laughs> be my guest. Halo Infinite adds a dedicated Slayer playlist on December 14th. You can go play that now. Did you try it out yet? No. Me neither. Because there's no reason for me to play Halo multiplayer right now. There's no progression. F. F. The Switch sold more than 1 million units in November, and it's the best-selling console in the U.S. last month. It also uh, has been the best-selling console for the last 35 out of the last 36 months. 35 out of 36 months. Yeah, having mm -hmm. lost the PlayStation 5 back in September, but until then, the streak continued. So We got new Elden Ring screenshots. Epic. Which are so cool. They are very cool. I new can't wait. New Horizon Forbidden Rest trailer and screenshots showing new robots. Tencent has acquired Turtle Rock Studios. Very, very epic. Now, James, we just rocked... That's a 22-minute episode, which is very short. So I apologize if you were wanting a long one. But we got a couple things to say. We got a couple things to say. Oh my god, we do have a couple things to say. We have to chat it up for a sec. This is yeah. the last podcast from this dorm room. Yep. Uh, we've enjoyed doing it from here. I We've had technical issues abound. It's just been a lot of it. Yep. We appreciate you guys hanging in there with us. Uh, the, we'll go. We're gonna go back to the, to the two, mm -hmm. the two shot coming up. Yep. Audio quality will be better. That's a plus. Yep. The minus, James. So we're not gonna be here anymore. No. Yep. It's gonna be a big minus for me. Um, me too. Another thing is, uh, it was important. I was gonna bring it up. I forgot what I was gonna say. Do you have any? Do you have any idea what I was gonna say? That's a negative. I don't think so. Dang, I should have really written this down. Um, it was a good one too. But graduation tonight, baby. Let's go. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I hope. Uh, checkpoint, baby. That's episode ninety-three. Next week? No, that's what I was gonna say. We're not doing an episode next week. It would be Christmas Eve. It's there's too much going oh, on. Oh yeah. We're skipping next week, but we'll be back the week after. Um, I gotta move and all that stuff. I gotta set this back up. Um, yeah. So episode 94 in two weeks. I will see you in 2022. See you in 2022, baby. That's sad. That makes me sad, bro. Wow. We're almost at episode 100. We're almost at episode 100. We'll, we'll, be, we'll do something crazy. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll just... I got a couple ideas. Okay. I apologize for the short episode, but it was necessary today. It was very necessary. God bless you guys. Have an incredible Christmas if you celebrate. Have a great New Year's. And you know what? Have a great... Have a great time. Happy holidays. I'm just happy sad. Hanukkah. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy all the things. Happy everything. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. God bless y'all. We will see you in two weeks. Yep. Bye, everybody. Signing off.